Glory to God. Turn to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Oh, yes. It's good to hear the pages flying on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Matthew 22. In verse 23, would you read it with me? In the same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up the offspring up for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second also and the third even to the seventh. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said to them, you idiots. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Remember, idiot means spiritually blind, right? <laughs> he said, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. They were thinking carnally, weren't they? For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, you have not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of dead, but of the, of the what? Of the living. He is the God of life, not the God of death. So what he was explaining here is there's, there's two zones. There's the dead zone and the life zone. Amen. Hello. And it's your responsibility to come out of the dead zone. Once the Lord rescues you from the dead zone, it's your responsibility not to go back in it. Go to John 10. John 10. In verse 9. John 10 in verse 9. Let's read it together. Jesus said, I am the what? The door. the door. In other words, he is the door to the life zone. So you can come out of the dead zone. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal, to kill, and destroy. Well, that sounds like the dead zone, don't it? Steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have a what? Life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Well, that's the life zone. So how many of y'all want to live in the dead zone? How many of y'all want to live in the life zone? Well, hallelujah. That means you got to do something. You got to cooperate with God. See, you cannot live in the life zone by doing the things that are convenient to you. Hello? You live in a life zone by doing the will of God. Those people who do things, calling themselves Christians and doing their own will, is their, their convenience is not in the life zone. It's the dead zone. That's why Jesus said, many will come to me saying, and they will say to me, I've done this, I've done that, and so forth. But he said, listen, I don't know you. Depart from me. You're part of the dead zone. I'm the God of the life zone. So the Bible says that the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And his whole purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy anything associated with the will of God, isn't it? So he wants to steal the truth, doesn't he? He wants to kill every foundation that's built of God. And he wants to destroy your future. He wants to keep you in the dead zone. That's his purpose. Go to Luke 8. You know, the, the, the purpose of today's teaching called the dead zone is the reality that there is a dead zone. You know, do you ever be driving and you'd be talking on your phone, on the cell phone, and you hit a dead zone? Man, it's like, whoa, I just lost everything. You know, the whole conversation, you got to wait through, you get through the dead zone to reconnect, don't you? Well, people who are in the dead zone are disconnected. They don't know them. 
In Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Now the parable of this, the Bible says, the seed is the what? Word of God. Is the word of God true? Yes, it's truth. Those by the wayside are the ones who take, who hear the word of God. Then the devil comes to what? Comes and takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be what? That's called, he comes to steal. He's stealing the truth. Verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word in joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. This is where he steals or kills the foundation. So he steals the truth and he kills the foundation because the rock representation foundation here. And verse 14. Now the ones that fell, the, the seeds that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. This is where the devil steals destroys your future so that you are not bearing good fruit, but you are establishing dead works. He who is in a dead zone manifests dead works. In other words, they are not accounted for nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. You know, let's go to 15 first. But the ones that fell on what? Good ground are those who, having heard the word with the noble or what we call humble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with what? Patience or endurance. In other words, they learn and they fight so that they can do good works, bringing glory to the Lord. Is everybody okay? Again, I want to share that he comes to steal the truth, kill the foundation and destroy your future so that you cannot do good works. The dead zone produces nothing but dead works. The life zone produces the fruit of life and live works accounted in heaven. In Genesis 3. So you got to start asking yourself, what zone are you in? Genesis chapter 3. In verse 1. Would you read it with me? Now the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, His God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of, the, of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the dead zone, hello, in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you what? Touch it, men, lest you what? Die. Die, because anything in the dead zone produces death. So you must understand that the serpent is associated in the ruler of the dead zone. And he feeds and is maintained by eating life. So he's trying to maintain life. Are you listening? Even though he's trying to survive in the dead zone by eating life. Now, you remember when Adam and Eve fell, the Lord removed Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, didn't he? And the one thing he protected them from was from the tree of life. He, why? Because he knew that he did not want them to live forever. Because they were producers now of the dead zone, not of the life zone. Are you listening? They were now the offsprings of darkness. And the prince of power air now took over. So the whole world became a dead zone. This is a dead zone. And we must come out of the dead zone and maintain away from the dead zone. Amen. Are you listening? The serpent is the promoter of death and a holder of the dead zone. He maintains his life by taking life. Whew. He maintains his life by taking life. Of those in the dead zone. He wants to keep you in the dead zone till your last breath. Then he knows 
you're his. Ephesians 2. Just a simple quick teaching today to bring realization of zone. So nobody gets zoned out. You may end up in the twilight zone, and that's called the dead zone. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Start at verse 1, please. Read it with me. And he says, And you he made alive who were what? In the dead zone, man. And trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. In other words, they are taken captive in the dead zone. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, which are as the others. So we see that the dead zone is an area where the wrath of God is going to be established. The dead zone is maintained by the prince of power of air. Are you listening? The dead zone is associated with the flesh and the world. In verse 4, but it says, God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we are in the dead zone, in the trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Now, grace is the plan of escape. And raised us up together and made us where? Sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's the life zone. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus, which is the life zone. Has everybody got it? So we know that the prince of power air is associated with death. That's why when you bite an apple, it turns brown. Right? Everything's dying. We are only alive in Christ as we are seated in heavenly places, which is the life zone. Go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Would you read it with me? For you were what? Once darkness or again in a dead zone. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the dead zone. <laughs> But rather what? Expose it. So whose responsibility is expose the dead zone? Man, don't step in the dead zone. Don't go in the dead zone. There are many people in the dead zone. Even those who proclaim to be believers are still in the dead zone. Because they're producing dead works, not live works. See, the word believe means to follow. If you follow, you're walking out of the dead zone. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light, or what we call life, so that you can come out of the dead zone. You know, it's amazing. You can drive down the street and you can see all these bars, nightclubs. Those are all dead zones. That's why they say, Food and spirits. They might as well just put food in demons. It's real easy. I mean, really tell people what it's like. <laughs> There's a lot of dead zones, crack houses, prostitutions, all kinds of places, all of these places where darkness is being manifest is called a dead zone. It's actually producing death. So it's our responsibility to expose the dead zone so that others can get rescued from it and so you don't go in it. Hallelujah. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now, these are some characteristics or what we call fruits of people that have been taken captive in the dead zone. It says, now the works of the flesh in verse 19 are evident, which are what? Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Lewdness, idolatry, 
sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything alight. How about pornography? Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who what? Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God or the life zone. Does everybody see this? So these are areas where people still are in the dead zone. And I want you to get that this book that as the book of Galatians was written to believers, not unbelievers. This was written to believers who had decided to walk out of the life zone and go back into the dead zone. And they began to produce dead works. In verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, who is the life zone, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such that there is no law. And those who are what? Christ have crucified the flesh which, with its passions and desires. In other words, you have crucified, you have nailed to the cross the dead zone and walked away from it. For if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envy another, one another. In other words, what you practice is called fruit. Fruit is exposing whether it is from the dead zone or the life zone. Those led by the Spirit are Christ, and they have crucified or nullifying the dead zone. Hello. They are now promoting or manifesting the life zone. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. That's why Jesus left us the Spirit. He is the Spirit of the life zone. So that he can guide us and teach us and lead us out of the dead zone. Expose the dead zone. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be to God who what? Always leads us in triumph in Christ, which represents the anointing. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. In other words, he manifests his fragrance. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are believers being destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're still associated in fellowship and in pet in the dead zone. For we are, verse 15, we are to God the what? Fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So you are releasing the fragrance of Christ. In other words, people know they sense something. Look at verse 16. What does he say? He says, to one we are the aroma of what? Death, leading to death. Why? Because you are exposing the dead zone. And to another the aroma of life, leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as a sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So we manifest a fragrance of truth. In our, but to those who are rebelling against the truth, it is a fragrance of death to them. Because light exposes darkness. And so also exposing the dead zone. In Ephesians 5, in verse 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Everybody okay? That's why the Bible says, man, don't be fellowshipping with those of the dead zone. And verse 1, let's read it together. Therefore be what? Imitators of God, who is the God of the life zone. As dear children, and walk in love, as Christ has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Yeah. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. 
For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. In other words, no way in the life zone. So let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers, what? With them. So we are to be imitators of God and not partakers of the dead zone. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts 17. And uh, let's see here. Ooh, nice. Verse 26. Acts 17, verse 26. Is everybody there? Let's read it. And he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. In other words, there are dead zone dwellings, isn't there? And there are life zone dwellings. So he has established within us these areas or boundaries so that we don't go beyond the life zone back into the dead zone. So that they should what? Seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold and silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent and come out of the dead zone. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by what? Raising him from the dead zone. Ooh, yeah. So there are boundaries there are boundaries that he's established for me and you so we do not walk out of the life zone. Those are quickened to you by the Holy Spirit who is the mentor. He establishes the boundaries in your life. The Old Testament boundaries were established by the tutor known as the law. But the new covenant, which is the ministry of the Spirit, the boundaries by, are established by the mentor called the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of life. He is the breath of God, so that you are no longer under the breath of death. You are under the breath of life. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 17. Now let's start at 16. Therefore, from now on, what? We regard no one according to the flesh. Why? What are they associated with? The dead zone. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Yeah, why? Because he's sitting at the right hand of God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. In other words, he's in the life zone. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become what? New. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us the word of reconciliation. Now, this is very powerful. In other words, he who is in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away, all things have become new. There's something very important you must understand that yesterday is gone. You cannot resurrect yesterday. It is dead. Yesterday is now a part of the dead zone. It's dead. It's gone. History, kaput. Now the devil would like to bring Yesterday or your past, which is associated with the dead zone, to your present. Because if he can do that, he can cause you to go back into the dead zone. Are you listening? Anything that is from this moment past is going to be considered the dead zone. 
the time is ticking away in the natural realm. Because every time that that clock ticks or that second goes, everything passes back into the dead zone. But you and I are not bound by space and time. We are eternal. So if we're eternal, we're not associated with time. Are you listening? That's if you're in Christ. That's if you're not going to the past. The past is dead and it's the ruler of death who controls it. If you're in the past, you are in the dead zone. If you die in the dead zone, you go to hell. Hello. Does everybody got it? Now, yesterday is dead and is associated with death. The devil is still trying to keep you in the dead zone to produce dead works. Again, the past is the dead zone. Only he who is in Christ can do the reconciliation. Now, what God does then, while you're in the life zone, he'll take certain things of the dead zone, okay, and bring life to it, and then he reconciles it with you. Are you listening? He does not reconcile anything with you that is dead. Amen. Come on, do you get this? Anything that's associated with the dead zone and is dead, he doesn't reconcile to you. He reconciles to you those things that have been made alive, not that are dead. Amen. Then they stay in the life zone and go forward. Because we are not going back. The only way to maintain new life is to stay and feed it by everything new. You do not feed something that is alive with death. <laughs> Hello? But you can feed something that's dead with life. <laughs> are you listening? To bring life. So what happens is God takes anything from the past or the dead zone. See, this is why it's so important that in your cooperation with God, and there's so many believers that are still caught up in the dead zone and don't even know it. Just because they go to a Bible study, they think they're okay. But you know what? They do things in convenience to themselves. They do not things according to the will of God. They do things that are convenient to themselves. That is the dead zone because self is associated with the dead zone. That's why Jesus said something very important. You must deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Why? Because if you're not willing to deny yourself, you're still caught in the dead zone. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. That's why people are still trying to fight for their life that's associated with the dead zone instead of surrender it. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 21, is everybody there? You know, God has been very gracious to us. Amen. He's been pouring out His Spirit since Friday night, man. I'm still drunk. Awesome. You know, I love it because your Spirit's constantly praising and worshiping God, you know? You can hear, the, you can hear your Spirit praising God. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be rolling over in bed at night and your Spirit's still praising God. You can hear, you can hear the glorious words of praise and glory to Him. You know, I mean, during the night, I was my spirit was just praising God. And I then when I woke up and I was awake, I heard a song by Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> All along the watchtower, and the Lord was reminding me, and that's all He kept. He kept saying, "Around the watchtower, all along." He's saying, "Come on, I'm raising up watchtower. I'm raising up the watchtower. I'm raising up the watchtower. I'm putting my watchmen on the watchtower so they can help and guide people in the boundaries, so that they don't go back into the dead zone and they stay in the life zone." He's establishing watchtowers all over. I know it sounds strange, but praise God. Well, we're called peculiar people, aren't we? <laughs> verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For to this you were what? Called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled did not revile in return. In other words, he didn't get offended. He didn't try to justify himself. He didn't try to prove 
that he was right. Hello? Uh, let's read 23 again. Who when he was reviled did not revile in return. When he suffered he did not threaten. <laughs> but committed himself to him who what? Judges righteously. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were what? Healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Hallelujah. Revelation 20. People who walk in offense are in the dead zone. People who walk in unforgiveness are in the dead zone. Book of Revelation. Is everybody there? Chapter 20 and verse 11. Well, you came to hear the truth, right? Don't let the devil steal it today. In verse 11, chapter 20, let's read it. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the what? The dead. Where are they from? The dead zone. Small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were what? Judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. In other words, the book of remembrance. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In other words, they were written in the book of death, the dead zone. The dead are going to be judged. There is no escape from the lake of fire. For those who are caught in a dead zone. None. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. So where are you at? The dead zone or the life zone? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. What does it say? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because he's in the what? Dead zone. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the dead zone. The world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. For what? Ever. Little children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. And even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were what? Of us, because they chose to live in the what? In the dead zone. But it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all these things. You know the boundaries. You know. Nothing is hidden from you. You know. Amen? Everybody all right? Praise God. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. The Lord, if there's anybody here in the dead zone, get them out. Open eyes, ears, and hearts. Bring revelation and manifestation that we may know and see what zone we're in or what zone is ahead of us that we don't step in the dead zone but maintain life in the life zone in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.